Neurofeedback is a type of biofeedback that uses real-time displays of brain activity to teach self-regulation of brain function. By essentially providing a workout for the brain, neurooptimal neurofeedback interacts with the central nervous system to improve neural plasticity. As a result, the brain becomes more flexible and resilient, thus better able to adapt to changes in the environment and to bounce back from negative events. During a brain training session, sensors on the head track a person's brain waves. When brain activity shows signs of turbulence, the music within the neurooptimal neurofeedback software is momentarily interrupted. This subtle cue alerts the brain that it is operating inefficiently. With repeated training sessions, the brain learns to reset itself and function more smoothly. All of this learning happens outside of conscious awareness. Over time, neurooptimal adjusts itself automatically in response to the brain's activity individualizing the training microsecond by microsecond to a person's brain functioning. Neurooptimal neurofeedback has been used by children and adults to address challenges associated with anxiety, PTSD, traumatic brain injury, autism, ADHD, and other complaints related to disorders in learning, mood, and sleep. Recognized by the FDA as effective for managing stress, and by the American Pediatric Association as a level one best support treatment for children with ADHD, Neurofeedback is a safe and non-invasive approach that has lasting effects. During the spring of 2016, five children at Arts Caliber Academy in Victoria, British Columbia, participated in a neurofeedback program over the span of two and a half months. Each child received between 12 and 18 sessions of brain training using the neurooptimal system. Parents and teachers were interviewed at the end of the program to reveal how the neurofeedback had impacted the children. Here is what they had to say. I think one thing that we've noticed uh, about our son is a general calmness, uh, an improvement in his resting state, um, where we would find in the past he was anxious or um, vibrating almost. We've found a real decrease throughout the day um, and even into his nighttime uh, bed readiness and sort of sleep prep time. He's been much calmer and uh, more manageable in that sense and easier to take direction. I feel she is more confident in taking um, risks in areas where she didn't have the comfort level before and that is played out in her learning. Her ability to um, self-regulate better and um, manage her emotions, stay um, more calm, less reactive more successful in her social settings. In her confidence overall in her um, social interactions with children, there seems to be less anxiety when she's uncomfortable. She is better able to trust the people around her and trust that, they, um, that she will be kept safe. She's not um, screaming and running out of the room. She's, you know, she's um, resolving things and I think her friends have noticed that difference too. And we've really seen a, a difference in direction. His, his general behavior is more controlled uh, and, and expected or usual rather than um, sort of coming to the, uh, uh, the high stress, high reactive sort of state that's really decreased and it's been noticeable and demonstrable to us. It's like all of a sudden she like loves school and she's happy here. We've seen a real sort of balancing of his emotional baseline. Even in interactions here in the school where there's been uh, challenges on the schoolyard with, with children and hierarchies and all of those things, Jude is managing, despite all of the feelings that go along with that, he's managing behaviors where his first instance would have been aggression, now it's I'm going to talk to a teacher, follow the process, do everything right. So in terms of the brain remapping, it seems like Jude's original path was here, there, this up and down, and now it's linear. Neuroptimal helped me to not think about it. So I think about other things like school and homework. <laughs> It's, there's a resting period where that resting period allows the emotional intelligence to think so he can understand and experience from somebody else's position while at the same time articulating where he is. So that's, that's been a definite change and that is very recent. In another incident with a, uh, with a young boy, uh, I noticed that there was actually a little bit more of emotional outbursts at first and silliness 
and now the ability to self-regulate with just maybe a gentle reminder is all that is needed for him. Here he struggled with dealing with variants of, of, of ages, of the hierarchy of the schoolyard, but in the past month and a half we've really seen him sort of uh, advocating for himself in a very calm and emotionally intelligent manner. That's um, really sort of, he's tapping into what's happening inside and articulating it rather than just going <clears throat> In the last three months he has been successful at not only spelling the words correctly but at the pace of the other students. So he has sped up his um, processing in his ability to write and record these words. The default position now is to think first and react second. And we're really, really happy about that because it's changing his life. And she's able to um, use the tools that we give her with the Leader in Me program of being able to communicate, um, you know, seek help when needed so that she doesn't just go to that sort of meltdown place. She's able to stop, seek help, or stop, take a breath. And so she's able to keep that more calm, uh, even keel instead of the bolting that will often happen when she gets overwhelmed. And yes, we'd like to, this, to continue this as being a part of his education and um, it's just it's building a skill set and helping him succeed. It's just another tool in the drawer, I think. And I've noticed other kids taking more risks uh, with their learning, being willing to read a reader's theater piece in a circle where we all have roles. Their roles were smaller, but they were able to sound out the words and allow us to help them get through something which they would not have risked before. They're also reading their own writing, which again is sometimes invented, but at least they're willing to share with us. They're willing to let us in on the process of their learning. So they're getting more of a change mindset rather than a fixed mindset. When Neuroptimal came around, Hi, I'm Neuroptimal. Ooh, I want to try you. It's like they're able to just sort of cope more and then that, because that is calmer, then when they go back into the classroom, then that carries over. It's, um, it helps you see the bigger picture. It, there's just more of a calmness, uh, ability to receive more and not getting overwhelmed with the uh, stimulations of either just in a social environment in the classroom or overwhelmed with expectations in the classroom in terms of academics or transitions. She wants to go to school. She wants to learn. She wants to do everything. Where before they might have gotten part of it, they're able to listen and focus and get the whole, the whole concept. And so they're more, more successful and then they're able to move further in their learning because they were able to receive it all. It's subtle, and sometimes it takes a while, but I think there is a positive effect, so I'd recommend it. The leaps that are happening, the learning risks that are occurring in the times that they're back in the classroom really outweigh the missed time to do the neurofeedback. I would highly recommend neurofeedback for other schools that are seeking, uh, seeking assistance with, for, for students with special needs because I've just seen in the short period of time that the students here at Arts Caliber have been receiving it, like 12 to 18 sessions that they've received so far, there's just been such huge growth in all cases. And all of the students, they're all individual, and so their needs are very varying and very different. And I've just, there, hasn't, there isn't one case where they haven't benefited from the program.